watching it grow up in the sky his body so low i keep me like foe he sleep on the floor he don't got no money i show him the dough oh no kick It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Rams and the Colts, and it's coming up next. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Just as we were ready for the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Los Angeles Rams. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Rams, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. teams here fresh off week one victories who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports bringing it out of his end zone Isaiah Rogers and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback so the Colts now coming out for their opening drive They'll be led by their second-year quarterback from Washington, the former Husky, it's Jacob Eason. A bit of a winding road to the NFL for Jacob Eason, including being only the fifth true freshman starter in Georgia Bulldogs history before finishing at the University of Washington. Plenty of potential with 6'6 height and a big arm to air it out well downfield. Has to show you can take some steps forward going from reading college defenses and taking on the speed of the NFL and rise to the challenges that those defenses present. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. And Charles, we get a look here at the key inactives, and I tell you what, a big list for being this early in the season. If there's any silver lining at all, you're hoping you can get these guys back, and now you'll play well down the stretch with them. But what you're also hoping is that the guys who have to play for them, the next man up mentality kicks in, and those guys take care of business. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Eason sets to throw it. Looking for Campbell downfield. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Uh, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Not the desired outcome, but probably won't be the last time we see them take a shot downfield. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. On the return, Jackson fighting his way through contact. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Quarterback Matthew Stafford bringing out the L.A. offense. And Stafford, of course, all those years in Detroit. And now in his first season with Los Angeles. And for how good he is throwing the ball, it's his running that makes him so dangerous. He had a couple of touchdowns on the ground in last week's game. So we'll see what they dial up for him for this one. Flushed out right. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. Touchdown, L.A. Daryl Henderson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Rams are going to take a first-quarter lead. They scored the most points of anyone on opening weekend, and now first-quarter touchdown here. And while there's no guarantee that all the points they scored on opening weekend are going to hold up and be the average all year long, 
they're certainly starting to set that type of a pace. And what you do with that is you put in the heads of all of your opponents. We've got to really be ready on defense because these guys know how to put the ball in the end zone. You think they can keep piling on the points like this? I think they can if they're prepared to adjust and adapt because they won't see the same defenses week in and week out. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Rodgers going to return it from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. On the give, this is Mack. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. Well, this defense for the Rams, terrific last week in the season opening victory. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to... And the Rams got him. They bring him down. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. Just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously, led to a very quick sack. And this came from the edge, and those pass rushers, they have so many tricks of the trade to get around blockers. They have a lot of tools in their kit. This was pure speed and athleticism on this play, though. And they could barely get a glove on him before he got the quarterback on the ground. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this will be down just inside the 30-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And you see his numbers from a week ago. He was up over 100 yards then, and he's already hit pay dirt here once in this one. We always talk about quarterbacks and receivers getting into rhythm, right? Really feeling good, finding each other downfield. I think running backs operate the same way. They can hit a good rhythm and a good stride, and he's carrying it over from last week. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now a first down throw. Stafford. Throw right side. Going to be taken in by Henderson. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. From the 50 at Stafford. He finds his man complete. That's Henderson. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll lead here to a third down. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Come on now. Well, that is a running back who was not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. Yeah, and this is most definitely the guy you want running the football when you need the tough yards on third down. And he moves the chains and then some as he shakes off that first contact. And as they said in the 70s, he just keeps right on trucking. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now a run with Henderson. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Here's Stafford. 
He'll buy some time right. Looking for the end zone. And he's got it. That's cup for a Ram touchdown. Matthew Stafford, two touchdown passes in this first quarter. And the Rams are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. So this offensive unit, yeah, they were solid in the opening week victory, and now they are looking just as sharp here in week two. And that's exactly what you want, too, because you want to get better each and every week and really ramp up as the season goes on. I know it's still early in the season and a lot can happen, but this offense, they look like they're going to be fun to watch each and every time out. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. And here's Rodgers to return. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Naeem Hines, his first carry. to admit I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. A look at the numbers for Doyle from a week ago. Six catches, 51 yards, and a touchdown. And I'd certainly expect them to use him quite a bit because he runs excellent routes, has good hands, and knows how to get open. On first down, they'll stay with Mack on the ground. Good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the broken tackle. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now a give running left with Mack. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Here's Eason to throw. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They'll roll him out right. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now Stafford escaping the pressure right. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now it's Stafford. He finds his man complete. That's Henderson. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Flush to his right. Down on the field, we've got an injured Colt after this. that last play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. Second and ten. Out of the gun, Stafford rolling to his right. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. And give him ten that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. 
could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, go. he got them both go. down, says the side go. judge, and that's good enough for a first down. Well, it's a jet sweep, the football to Woods. He's got the first down inside the 10, and he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Robert Woods, his first touchdown here of the new campaign, and the Rams add on to their lead. Boy, these guys are off to the races, Charles. 20 to nothing already, extra point pending. Yeah, you always hear that term, they just boat race someone. Heck, it's car race, motorcycle race, plane race, whatever you want. Right now, they are sprinting past them. Gay is on for the point after. And it is now 21 to nothing. So that drive goes eight plays. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And the Colts coming out now. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Eason going to throw it out of the shotgun. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Eason. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the handoff, it's Mack. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. On the ground, it's Mack. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Five yards, now it's third and five. Eason. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. Finding some room at midfield. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Well, these guys certainly need something good to go their way because this first quarter has been something of a disaster for them trying to move the ball. But that completion there maybe can get them focused and moving in the right direction. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Here's second and ten. Try to get that one to his running back, Marlon Mack. But it'll be second down. Throwing is Eason. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Now it's Mack, draw play. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Fourth down now after a loss of two. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it does it, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. 
Frank Reich, he didn't even seem hesitant about this. He wants to go for it on fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Mack. And he will have the first down, but he winds up paying for it pretty good. Good spot on the field to go for it. Kind of no man's land, as they call it. It worked out. Yeah, they call it no man's land because your punter's telling you it's too short. I'm just going to punt it into the end zone. Your field goal kicker might give you a little raised eyebrow. Might be too far for the field goal. So it gives you a great chance to go for it. Personally, if you have those tendencies to be aggressive as a head coach, you kind of like this spot because it gives you the decision to go ahead and go for it when you want to anyway. On the handoff, running left, Marlon Mack. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. Twenty-one nothing. Our score after one. The Colts on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for this with Mack, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Rodrigo Blankenship for the Colts field goal. This a forty-three yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So they do come up with their first points of the game, but Charles, the question is going to shift to their defense. Yeah, the way things have gone, three points could become insignificant fast if this grows to 28 to 3 or 35 to 3. They need this defense to come up with a stop, and they need to do it now. Jackson now to return. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Matthew Stafford and the rest of the Rams offense set to take over once more. A big reason why they've been so successful. This defense hasn't been able to contain him when he gets outside of the pocket. So true, and that's when it's really difficult because defensively you can have a game plan and try and account for all the things you've seen on tape, the way that they run their plays, even his running. But when it's a play where you just can't really say, okay, that's how the play's supposed to go, what they call broken plays, that's when the X and O doesn't work. That's when their Jimmy is better than your Joe. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Stafford's throw here, hauled in by Cup. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. On first down, Stafford here. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Sliding out of the pocket. There's the stiff arm. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. The Rams on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. Here it's third and three. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here we go on fourth. Stafford on the run. He'll let it go deep, right sideline. And this one is incomplete. Let's go, let's go, so certainly let's go. an interesting call there to go for it. And the Colts are going to get the football in outstanding field position. They'll throw on first down with Eason. Take it in by Pascal out left. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Marlon Mack. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll run here with Mack. And not much running room. Down to the 32. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, 
you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And he's going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity in the ball game. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Looking to throw. Eason, left side, Doyle with it. Touchdown! Jack Doyle, his second touchdown on the season. And the Colts are able to cut into this lead. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. So after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. Eluding the pressure right. And he slides to avoid the hit. Stafford on first down. Flushed out right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Throwing again on second down. Stafford escaping the pressure right. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll try the air now with Stafford. Got a man open. It's Tyler Higby. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. On first down at Stafford. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Second down, it's Henderson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. The Rams on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third down and 12. And it's incomplete, broken up. But there is a flag down. Let's see what that's about. So they decline it as that will bring up fourth. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the purse. Marlon Mack now heading back out there. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. We'll see if he can look and do some soul searching now. Here's Mack to get it again on second down. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. He's got exactly what you're looking for, the ability to not just diagnose a play and quickly, but to make a play as well. Nice job there tackling him for a loss. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. 
Here's Jackson to return. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Set to begin their next drive. The Rams offense at the line. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Flush to his right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And now the up man has it. It's a fake. And shedding through the tackle. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. The result there is the offense is going to come back on the field. A first down as they get 12 on the fake punt. So they snap it straight to the up man. What's his responsibility? Normally, obviously, just to protect, but he's got to be a guy that can be pretty agile too, right? Yeah, without a doubt, because you're talking about a guy, even in protection, he may have to slide up and down the line of scrimmage to pick up someone who comes through trying to block a punt. So you know he's got that ability to move, but oftentimes it's a, usually a running back, a fullback, someone who's used to having the ball in their hands, and he's able to pick up the first down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Eluding the pressure right. He'll let this go for the end zone. And he's got it. That's Cup for a Ram touchdown. Cooper Cup with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. Well, he's been doing this for more than a decade now, showing that he's still got that arm strength from back when he was the number one overall pick. And as that ball was hanging in the air with the receiver streaking downfield to meet it, here in the stadium, you could just sense the crowd thinking, oh, no. And their worst fears were realized as that one turned into a long touchdown. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Rodgers on the return. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Let's go! The Colts getting another possession here on offense. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. to throw again. Eason, and that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. Here's the correct call. Now a run to the back. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. From the gun is Eason. Campbell making the catch. 
And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A couple of first downs on the drive already as he'll go from the 47 now on first down. A give running right is Mack. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll try the left side. Mack. Mack gets hit, and the ball is free. And now the Rams have got it. Go the other way. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Well, he has been a workhorse for them in this game, and ball security hasn't been an issue until that point. Yeah, and let's face it. When he's going to carry the ball that many times, he becomes more and more of a target for the defense, knowing that he's going to be the primary guy. They'll just send more and more players towards him, trying to make sure they knock the ball. And got his man complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big connection on that one. 33 yards from the red zone now. Stafford, he'll buy some time right. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Fourth touchdown pass of the game for Matthew Stafford. And the Rams are able to widen their lead here in this first half. So not only is that his third touchdown catch of the game, he's done it here in the first half. I'm not sure defensively what they're going to come up with to slow him down because already we're seeing him run past over through guys in order to make these catches and being able to try and shut him down at this stage of the game it's going to take a lot of effort so maybe it'll open things up for some other people well they better figure something out and soon after the touchdown it's gay to kick this one away and here's rogers to return and he'll be out of bounds here a yard shy of the 25 and the 24. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Draw play. This is Hines. And he's got some space here. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Game clock at 2.01. Time for one final play before the two-minute warning. First and 10, Taylor now. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in his second week of the regular season. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. He was looking that time to get it to Paris Campbell. Third down here. Eason sets to throw it. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup. Bounce didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. He's the star wide receiver, and he's doing his thing so far here into the second quarter. And how you get distinguished as a star is each and every week performing to a high level no matter what they throw at you because you're always wanting to take him out of the game if you're a defensive team. How do you press him, double him, triple him, all those things, but the best players show up each and every week, solid games and some spectacular ones. And he has showed up time and time again. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. 
They'll roll him out right. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And quickly, they get to the line. Now a first down throw, Stafford. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. And they'll indeed take a knee. So the field goal unit is coming on here. And boy, this is going to be darn near impossible. And they say officially it's a 68-yard attempt. this has the carry it does not it's no good so that would have been something from that distance but to no avail comes up empty as we have reached the intermission as we'll send you down to Orlando we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports halftime report coach okay Brandon we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit but first it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening week hit let's see what's happening in week two we get started up at the link, San Francisco, with two road games to start the year, taking on Philadelphia in their home opener under Nick Sirianni. And they've gone to halftime with the Eagles out in front. Travis Fulgham, a touchdown catch in that first half. From there, we head down to the Sunshine State to check on the Jaguars at home in Jacksonville. And they trail the visiting Denver Broncos in that one. Two touchdown passes there for Teddy Ballgame. Finally, we finish at MetLife Stadium to see what's going on with the Jets. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting New England Patriots. Corey Davis, a touchdown reception. On now to a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Rams. And it's been their quarterback who, not surprisingly, has led the way. But what is surprising is just how effective he's been on the ground. And he's already closing in on 100 yards for the game. Meanwhile, for the Colts, we look at their rushing numbers as a whole, and we'll likely see them throw a little bit more in the second half with them currently on the losing end of the scoreline. These two coaching staffs likely going through their final adjustments for the second half. One of these teams is going to emerge 